Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to introduce the response capabilities of Cisco's EDR product, Cisco's Secure Endpoint. Response is the last of the three elements of Secure Endpoint. When a threat is detected, it's used to contain the spread of the infection. Let's take a look at what kind of response features are available. Today's topic is response. What does the response feature allow us to do? The response feature helps to respond quickly to security incidents and prevent further damage. For example, performing endpoint isolation remotely can greatly reduce the incident response time and prevent the situation from escalating. It can also address increasingly sophisticated threats by responding to minor anomalies in real time. Protection features ensure security by quarantining and blocking threats. While detection features constantly monitor the system for anomalies and vulnerabilities, the response functions suppress threats that have managed to sneak into the system before they can cause further damage. Yes, by appropriately addressing sophisticated cyber attacks using these features, the true value of an EDR product can be demonstrated. I can see the whole process of dealing with cyber attacks. What specific actions can be taken with the response features? For example, when infected with unknown threats or detecting suspicious behavior, isolating infected devices, isolating undetected files, blocking suspicious IP addresses, these are situations where the response features come in handy. So it means isolating devices infected with unknown threats and isolating the threats themselves. First, let me explain the endpoint isolation feature. Endpoint isolation is a feature that logically disconnects a device's network communication from the console. Isolated devices have all their communications blocked, except for the communication with Cisco Threat Database Cloud. This means that the device can be investigated from the console while it remains in isolation. If there are servers you wish to maintain communication with while in isolation, you can use the IP allow list to maintain communication with those servers while in isolation. It's convenient to be able to investigate from the console while keeping the infected devices network isolated. Next, let's talk about custom detection, which is used when isolating undetected files. Custom detection involves creating a list of SHA-256 hash values for files that need to be isolated, such as unknown malware. By doing so, you can isolate any desired files. This prevents the spread of infection caused by worm activities and allows detection and isolation of unknown threats observed at a certain point. If a file initially identified as clean is later determined to be malicious in the cloud database, the detection result will be updated. Also, detection and isolation are automatically performed based on the result of the update. Custom detection can also be useful if you want to actively detect and isolate before the update. Custom detection seems useful for protecting the entire organization when malware infections are spreading. Next, let's talk about blocked application list, which is used when you want to stop the execution of undetected files instead of isolating them. A blocked application list is composed of a list of SHA-256 hash values for files you want to stop from executing. By doing so, you can block the execution of any desired applications. This prevents the execution of suspicious files. Furthermore, it can also be used to prevent the execution of unauthorized applications within the organization, or to temporarily stop running low numbers of career until patches are released. Additionally, there is an allowed application risk feature. In cases where you want to avoid execution stop from certain applications due to false positives from the detection engine, such as custom applications or standard applications used across the organization, you can rest them using SHA-256 hash values similar to the blocking process. However, it recommended that when using allowed application list, you always make sure that they are trusted applications. Blocked application list stops the execution rather than isolating, so it needs to be distinguished from custom detection. Lastly, let's discuss IP block list, which is used when you want to block suspicious destination IP addresses. IP block list allows you to block any communication by listing the IP addresses of suspicious destinations. Whether it's a single IP address, entire cyber blocks, or specified IP addresses with port members. However, it should be noted that the block is dependent on the settings in the network section of the policy. It is recommended to the set the values to block. It is also possible to create an allow list of IP addresses in addition to the block list. I've learned what can be done with the response features. 
I'm going to start using these features in our operations right away. This time, regarding my questions about what can be done with the response features, I understand that it's possible to isolate infected devices, it's possible to isolate undetected files, it's possible to allow or block applications and IP addresses. Now you know the response features of Cisco Secure Endpoint. Please subscribe to our channel and give us a high rating. And stay tuned for more videos on Cisco security in the future. If there is anything you want to know, please leave a comment in the comment section.